All right, so dealing with a P0411 secondary air injection system, incorrect airflow detected on this 2015 Chevy Equinox with a 2.4. Now this has got secondary air injection. This is the second one I've seen this winter. Uh, most likely dealing with plug ports. So I'm gonna walk you through this one. Um, looks like we got some low tire pressure codes. And all readiness monitors passed outside of that secondary injection. Or ran, I should say. So, these have TSBs out for them. Um, let me get you the vehicle info in case you're wondering. So there you go. This is the LEA24, 15 Chevy Equinox. There's our VIN. And if we go back, let's see if I can find that TSB. Let's go in here. All right, so if we go into this TSB, you will see can be caused by moisture and ice buildup in the cold climate areas inferior fuel restriction in the um, secondary air injection ports in the cylinder head causing higher than expected um, pressures now this is the ice buildup in the what these got is they got uh, two I'll show you under the hood they got two uh, solenoids um, that open up uh, one for two cylinders uh, cylinders three and four and one for cylinders one and two and this buildup can cause the airflow problem okay now what they want you to do is remove the exhaust manifold and you have to remove the exhaust manifold and basically take the cat out to get to these ports because these ports live basically right here in the head they're two little ports and you know they're ported for each runner and that's where it you know injects it's got like these little extra manifolds on the back and they're bare to kind of get all this off but nevertheless uh, I've actually got that one on the hoist right now waiting on parts for the exact same problem it's ironic how I get things in pairs sometimes but there's the ports in the head that they're talking about now what will happen is um i think on that one it was the passenger side or no yeah passenger side ports where cylinders one and two uh, there was build up in one of the ports uh, carbon build up basically restricting that flow and then this is the um i don't know i guess you would call it like the manifold for the secondary injection that the check valves mount to um, these are the ports on them and you can see that they build up with carbon. Um, they're just giving you what they want you to use. They they want you to up, use the upper the GM upper engine cleaner to clean out the ports and whatnot. And then of course your labor times, which I think I quoted them like five hours to do it. So we'll use bidirectional. We'll command the pump on. Make sure everything's working. Make sure we got airflow, and then uh, we're pretty much going to be done because we're going to have to sell removal time in order to go in there and confirm that those ports are indeed plugged. So, let's get under the hood. Oh, what do we got for mileage on this thing? I think it was like 60 some thousand. So, not a lot of mileage. So again, it's gonna be back here, obviously. So, let me get this intake, uh, let me get the intake system off, the cover off. We'll get back to those check valves and I'll show you how to check it using the bi-directional and scan tool to command the pump on. Pump lives down here, right below the intake manifold. This is the fresh air side to the actual injection pump. This hose obviously runs down to the pump down there. So, all right. Well, there's our two SAI 
or secondary air injection solenoid check valves, if you will, I was talking about. And you can see the runners back there. Um, let's see. Where, let's take a look and see if there's any ice on these. Yeah, throttle body is disgusting, so that'll be clean. And we're going to blow this rat's nest out of here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bracket out so we can access it a little easier and uh, get this harness out of the way. Alright, so let me give you a quick rundown of how these things work. You got a power and ground, basically, for the solenoid. There's, there's a valve in there that opens and closes, kind of ground side controlled, if I remember right. I don't know, I'd have to look it up, but... The other three wires are the pressure sensor that's built into these. And I believe on the scan tool, scan tool from the last one I did, the pressure sensor, um, there's, you know, basically, like I said, there's two pressure sensors and they're built into these. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna take them off their runners. Now I'll show you the parts because I got them actually sitting on the bench for this other one. So here's those runners. Those solenoids mount right up to these ports here. And this is obviously head side, solenoid side, solenoid side, head side. And you can see that one's got the clog, the, the ports partially plugged on it with carbon. And if you look at the actual manifold gasket, you'll see that one. That's driver's side, and there's the plug right there, passenger side port, and that right there is the reason for the code. And, you know, basically it's everything that's got to come off. So, kind of cool that I had two of them at the same time, because I can actually show you that. So, let me get these. These are coming, these are your, um, this is coming from the injection pump. Okay, so we'll disconnect. We'll make sure we got airflow to these. Equal, you know, they're blowing. And then we'll check the solenoids operation. And then, like I said, we'll remove the solenoids just to take a peek. But pretty confident we're going to have the same problem. So if you take a look, again, passenger side, you can see the moisture, the moisture in there. That's what they were talking about. That's where the ice builds up. And... That moisture, I'd imagine, comes from them clogged ports, and it builds pressure or condensation. All right, so let me hook these back up, and we'll get scan tool. Well, actually, we, yeah. Now, what you can do is you can actually stick your finger in there, and you can feel the valve move get a light here yeah, there's a lot of moisture in that one oh, let's see here can you see that I don't know if you can see it but there's the valve right there okay so you can feel them things move when you command them on with the scan tool um, I don't know if you're yeah you're not gonna be able to see the other side of it all right, so let's go into engine. Now it will time out on you, functionals. And you're gonna see output controls. Scroll down here, and you're gonna see secondary injection solenoid valve. Um, what we wanna go to is secondary injection pump relay. Okay, I'm gonna click on that. It's only gonna run it for so long. Key on, engine off, okay? You're going to hear this pump kick on when I turn it on. So let's turn it on. Get flow out of that one. Run the pump. 
Yeah. So, kick it back on, just cycle your key off. Back on again. Exit. Come back down. Turn it back on. Poor airflow out of this one. But they're both pushing air, guys. It's got clogged, it's got clogged ports. So let's exit out of here. Let's check these solenoids. Go to the solenoid valve. May or may not let me. Oh, it's gonna let me. Now you can see we can open and close them. So it's open. We're gonna open and we're just gonna feel. We're gonna feel with our finger if that valve moves. Open. Oh, it, hold on, let me cycle the key. Alright, let's try this again. Now we only got so much time. I only got one hand. So again, I got my finger in there, open, and that one moved, closed, that one moved, let's go to the other one, open, that one moved, closed, so nothing wrong with those valves, obviously we got moisture in that, so next step is take the solenoids off 213s on the back side there's a metal gasket don't drop them and yeah you'll have to replace them when you go to do the repair but i just want to check what i can without having to take the manifold off again the cat's got to come out it's a five hour job guys sell the job then do the repair i already showed you what's wrong um, but next step is take these valves off and just check the ports so Here's the other one, but there's the pump right there. We're underneath the vehicle, and you can see the pump just is mounted right to the pan there. Oh, let's see. So yeah, you can see the pipes coming off the pump. All right, so they're both out. We're just gonna check for airflow right here. And we need to go to our pump relay. Now when that pump relay is energized, it should open those valves up if I remember right. So let's turn it on. Oh, maybe not. system yeah here we go active inactive so this should open those valves up and run the pump or the yeah so, active airflow good airflow in both of them this one's got moisture in it We're done right there, guys. Obviously, everything's working. Let's see. How do we check our pressure sensor? Our pressure sensors. Um, what did I just do? We want exhaust after treatment data. 
and custom deselect and find the right one. I am not in the right one. Oh, where the hell was it? I am data. Air data. EVAP air data. Oh, let's see. Deselect. Fuel tank pressure. Now you need to look at your map sensor. Here we go. Secondary injection pressure sensor voltage. Pressure sensor PSI. PSI. Looks like they're only going to give us one. And I think it's the driver's side one that they give us. Relay command, valve command. Graph view. Yeah, it's a 28.6 on our map. And you can see the relay's off. 14.2 on our PSI. Now, what we can do is look for a change. And we can do that. Oh, how did I do that before? I think it blew in this port. If I remember right. So, let me try doing that. I remember now. Take this off, you blow in that. You just blow air in this way, and the pressure sensor is going to pick it up. So again, pressure sensor lives in these this driver side check valve. We're just gonna blow pressure in here. You can see the change. So again, I'll blow pressure in. And you can see we obviously had a change. Now I'm gonna pull a vacuum on it. And you can see we got a change. Now there is a chart to compare that to see if your pressure sensor skewed in accordance with the barrel. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not. It's exactly where it should be. All right, before we get carried away with how the system works, let me give you the quick parts lay down. These are the two gaskets that you're gonna need for the secondary injection check valves, or solenoids, if you will. You're gonna need 10 studs for your manifold, 10 nuts for your manifold. That's your exhaust manifold. There's supposed to be three. I'm waiting on one for the cat, the three nuts, the manifold, the cat gasket. <clears throat> That's your back, um, well, flex pipe to rear pipe, I guess you would call it, gasket, the flange gasket, and there's two nuts for it, okay? Because these are going to be rusted out, most likely. So, and then of course you need your new exhaust manifold gasket, and you can see they're real proud. That's how you know you got the AC Delco Wonder made in Mexico. No, ironically, these are made in Japan, but nevertheless, um, that's everything outside of that one stud I'm waiting on. So I'm dubbing up the order because obviously I got two of them in here now. So that other one we just looked at, I'm gonna slap back together. And we'll ship her down the road, or I'll you know, put her out in the lot until we get our parts.